I'll make sure this is on, Pastor. Can you hear me? Good to go out there? All right. Hello, Detroit! I always wanted to do that. Uh, Pastor did say that, you know, he's taking notes, but he is grading me on this. So if you want to do a standing ovation, if you want to do the way that's all right with me, we can do that. And I don't know if any of the guests missed it, but this is Miss Deidre, the pastor's wife, right over here with the pastor. And uh, I'm not the pastor, so I'm just here to, I'm a Jesus Christ follower, and I'm just here to preach the word of God. Okay, let's go to the Bible. We're going to go to Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. Verses 14 and 15. And God's word says this. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 15. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And if you notice, I know in my Bible, it says, or it's written in red. And today's society, if you look out in society, see something that's written in red, or is red in color, that's telling you, hey, I need to pay attention to this. So you got, you got to uh, look and pay attention to anything that's written in red. And this, these two, red. Now, I've always been God-fearing. I've always knew who Jesus was. But I got caught up in the fast life. Drugs, rock, drugs, rock and roll, sex. I mean, I just, I got caught up in it. And, you know, Jesus tells us to be loving, to be generous, to be kind to one another, and to forgive. And that's the message of my story. My chart today is forgiveness. It is written in red. And when it's written in red, that means you need to pay attention. But the Bible says, and what Jesus, Jesus is talking in red. You need to pay attention to what Jesus is saying. Uh, when I was caught up in the fast life, I call it, I didn't think about being kind. I didn't think about being generous. I was worried about where my next high was going to come from. So I didn't do any of the things that Jesus wanted me to do. So when you're in when you're in that deep into the drugs, it's very hard. Addiction is very hard. I've seen men quit heroin before they quit cigarettes. Addiction is just is, is rough. And it's hard. Uh, I think forgiveness is a uh, very hard for a Christian because what if you were a victim of a crime or a, or, or a sexual assault? I'm, go I'm going to try to keep this degraded, but kids might ask questions later. So, uh, <laughs> good luck, parents. <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I? Yeah, being a victim. You see these moms out here with murdered children. You see, you see these women that are attacked, that are that are sexually attacked, and you got to you try to figure out how do they how do they forgive their uh, suspect or the people that did them wrong? How do they forgive? Now, I'm going to tell a story that I don't normally tell. Matter of fact, my wife doesn't, Kitty, doesn't even know the whole story. I don't talk about it. I don't like talking about it. I feel that I failed. But one, one time in my life, I had a young man that was 
with me. He was 14 years old. And he was a son of my girlfriend. Well, I'm going to keep the specifics out. But what happened was I had a two-year-old daughter. She was sick. And I took her to the hospital. And they proceeded to come in and tell me that she sexually molested. She showed the sign. And they did the test, which was horrible. Horrible. I would not wish that on anybody, that machine they put her on. But, Dad, you know how I felt. My daughter, my baby was violated. I had anger. I wanted to kill him. I just, I had a plan. I, when I, when he turned 18, and I already figured out I was going to go to prison, I was, I was preparing to go to prison, that when he turned 18, I was going to kill him. I was going to kill him. He hurt my baby. I was hurt. I was mad. I was mainly hurt because I didn't protect my baby like a father should. I mean, I know it couldn't be helped because pedophiles are sneaky. They can do their things without anybody noticing. So I was hurt and I was mad. I was very angry. And I knew where this guy was. He, he was my ex-girlfriend's son. I knew. And I wished every time that I went to pick up my son, which is his mother, I wished he would come out. I, I prayed for it. Come out. Come out of that house. Come out of that house. He never did. And to this day, he's not allowed around his children. He's got two girls and he's not allowed around them because of what he is. September 23rd, 2014, Jesus took my hand and walked me into rehab. I gave up the hate I gave up the vengeance. I gave up mean, meaningless relationships. I gave it all up. I just, I was, I was defeated going into rehab. And I know, I know that Jesus was with me. I know that Jesus walked me in hand, hand to hand to go into rehab. So, I gave up the drugs. I mean, I gave up everything. I, I was defeated. Now, early in Matthew, chapter 6, starting at verse 5, is a teaching on prayer. It is, it, Jesus is telling us how to pray. This is the Sermon on the Mount, and this is, Jesus' longest sermon. So it goes it goes on for like eight chapters. And on chapter six, verse five, starting verse five, ending in verse fifteen, it tells you how to pray, how to connect with the Lord. And in verse eleven, or no, verse twelve, it says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It says it in the Bible. It's written in red. Remember that. It's written in red. So, today, let me go back a little bit. Today, my daughter is, is fine. She was too young to realize what happened. Thank the Lord. 
does have some emotional issues, which she's taken care of. And when I gave up everything, I gave up the vengeance to hunt this kid down and do with him what I wanted to do with him. So that takes a lot. And you know, I've never said this out loud, but I forgive that young man for what he did to my baby. I have to. Jesus tells us in 14 and 15, we have to forgive. We have to forgive our trespasses as, and those who have trespassed against us. It's not, it's, it's just not a rumor. It's just not, you know, a saying. It is written in red that Jesus tells us we have to forgive those who have trespassed against us. And I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, go to uh, my favorite, one of my favorite verses is in the Gospel of Luke. Luke 23, verse 34. Luke 23, verse 34. And you have to imagine, you have to, you have to take the picture in. You got you to gotta think about what's going on. Jesus is hanging on the cross. He's got nails through his hands and feet. He's got a thorn or a crown of thorns on his head. He's suffering. But what does he do? He looks up and it, uh, God's word says this. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lot. So he was up on the cross asking for our forgiveness for what we do. Asking our forgiveness for sins that we have committed. And with him dying on the cross, he has taken away our sins. Present, past, and future sins are taken away by Christ being on the cross. And not long after that, after he, gives, he asks for our forgiveness, he gives up the ghost and he dies on the cross. And then you know the rest of the story. Three days, he grows again, and there you go. So I got proof. I'm going to go over real quick. You don't have to follow me. I'm going to go real quick. But in Matthew 7, verse 2, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Written in red. Matthew 18, verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto me, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother your trespasses. Wow. Written in red. Mark 11, 25 and 26. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. 26. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Written in red. Then I'm going to flip back. All right. We got it. I think that's all it's up. Oh! Copy! Now, Ephesians 4, verse 32 is not written in red, but it's still a good, good message. And it says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And then I'm going to flip back to James. And it says, James, on, on, uh, James 2, verse 13, it says, For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices, rejoices against judgment. That's not written in red, but it's important. What we need to do 
is we need to realize that there's no time left. There's no time to waste. There, it, it has to be done. If you, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and if you have somebody in your life that has done you wrong, I mean, just totally done you wrong, you have to forgive to be forgiven. I mean, it says it right here in the Bible, in red, in red. And uh, there's no time to waste. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to do that. There's no time to waste. Look at the world around us, guys. I mean, look at the violence. Look at the, the hate, the racism, the terrorists. The world is just on fire, and it's, it's burning beneath us, and we don't realize it. And we need to realize it. We need to get our stuff together. We need to pray and forgive. In the in the Lord's prayer, in the Lord's prayer, in chapter chapter six and verse five, on verse uh, fifteen, the Lord's prayer. I mean, the Lord's prayer says, "Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us." Then I read the verses. And, uh, I had proof. I call them my proof, my proof verses. I am pastor. I am running out of things. To say. Let me let me just reiterate. Let me just reiterate. It is written in red. Now. I can get an agreement that this is God's word, right? This is God's word. This is law. This is God's law. If you have any problems in today's society or, you know, anything, you can look at this book and it'll give you an answer. I have found since I started, decided to uh, follow Jesus Christ, I have learned that if I have a problem, I look in here and it gives me the answer. Gives me news. So, like I said before, there's no time to waste. We need to get to forgive them. And if you haven't been saved, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your uh, Savior. It's very important. The world is crumbling down around us. Thank you. A little, little song for me. We go into our song service. I'm going to just touch on what Brother Michael had preached on that forgiveness, and I love Luke chapter 23 and verse 34 when he said, "Then Jesus said, Forgive them, for they know not what they do." You know, a lot of times in our own lives. When we do things to others and we hurt people, we really don't know what we're doing. We lose control. We get angry and we hurt others. These people that hurt Jesus Christ and spit on him and ridiculed him, do you know why they did that? It's because they were angry. They were frustrated because Jesus came to shake the entire world, to change everything, everything. And yet Jesus goes to the cross and he's looking down after being bloodied, being beaten, being spit on, a crown of thorns upon his head, being nailed to a cross, struggling to breathe, pushing up with his feet that are stacked together and nailed together. And they broke his ribs, trying to breathe, and he, he's trying to catch his breath, and he can't. He can't catch it. And he's, and he's looking down, and he says, Father, he's looking up to God, forgive them. Because they have no idea what they're doing. Forgive them, Father. Forgiveness is what we need, church. Forgiveness is what that message was about. Forgiveness is what we need to give to one another. Forgiveness is what I need.
Forgiveness is what you need. Forgiveness is what everybody outside this building needs. Amen. Now, Michael put it so well and gave a strong testimony about forgiveness because he's been through it, hasn't he? And that was a powerful testimony, a testimony that I don't have. I didn't have the life that Brother Michael had. Different. But can I tell you this? We both needed forgiveness. We both needed a Savior. And if you're sitting here today and you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart, don't hesitate. I want to go ahead and we're going to bow our heads. We're going to go ahead and go into prayer. And then we're going to go into our song service. And when we go into our song service, anybody that is uh, going to be baptized today, go ahead and when we go into our song service, you can get dressed if you need to change your clothes or and get ready. We have the two bathrooms back here and we have a bathroom back down this way. So you guys can do that. But uh, when we get done praying, we go into our song service. I want everyone to go and get changed and ready. And then you can sit, you can sit over here on the side. But if you're sitting here, and you're not sure if you're going to go to heaven. You're like, hey, bro, Brother Bryce, I heard that message from Michael. I heard about forgiveness. I heard about what Jesus did for me on the cross. And I don't know if I were to die today, if I would go to heaven or hell. If you have no idea, I don't want anybody looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. Just keep them closed. If you don't know if you're going to go to heaven, would you just slip your hand up for me? I just want you to slip it up. Just be brave and say, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. Now, that's a, a big thing if you're like, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I have no idea, and you just raise your hand. You know, you're acknowledging that, hey, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. And you're even acknowledging, I don't want to go to that place called hell. I can tell you how you can go to heaven right now. There's three things that you have to do, all right? This is the three-step process. Number one. You have to accept who you are. You are a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that your wages, what you earn, the wages of sin is death. So guess what? Your payment is death. Your payment is you get to go to hell. That's who you are. Your righteousness is like filthy rags. Nothing you do. You can do all the good in life you can give to restoration. You can give to charities. You can do uh, community work. None of that matters in God's eyes because you're born into sin. When God looks at you, you're filthy and you're a wretch. That's the way I was. So that's number one, accept who you are. Number two, accept who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. God's Word says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And in Romans, I love this verse, and it says, God commendeth his love towards us, meaning you have a God in heaven that loves you so much. Those people that raised their hand for, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven or hell, and I, I, I'm not sure. Let me tell you this, you got a God in heaven that loves you so much that while in he sent his son Jesus here, that while in we were still yet sinners, meaning he knew that you were a sinner. He knows that I'm a sinner, that Jesus died for you. While, while we're in still yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what that verse says. And this is what I love. So you have to accept who you are, accept who Jesus is. Jesus came here, born of a virgin, lived a sinless, perfect life, and went to the cross and paid your payment for death. He paid it all. He went to the cross and he died. And you know what? It didn't stop there. Jesus Christ himself, when he died, he went to a place called hell for you. That's where he went. It even says that he preached to the devils in hell. But in three days, he rose from the grave. In three days, he took the keys to death and hell. And he rose again. Amen. And that is amazing. So you have to accept who you are, accept who Jesus is. But lastly, this is what you got to do. All right. This is the most important part. This is the key ingredients. You have to ask. In Romans chapter 10, I'll read these verses to you. Romans chapter 10. This is what God's word says, and I love it. Love Romans. I love the Romans road and the plan of salvation. Romans 10, verse 9, it says this. 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So basically it's like this, folks. When you accept who you are and you accept who Jesus is, you got to ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you. And it's not something that you say, well, I kind of want to ask. My wife didn't marry me until I asked her. She didn't, she didn't marry me. She didn't say, yeah, I'm going to marry you, Bryce. I had to ask her. You've got to say it with your mouth and confess it and say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I don't want to go to hell. Jesus, come into my heart and save me today. It is that simple, but only you can ask. And you know what? You don't have to go to hell because there's a God that loves you that sent his son to pay that payment so you can have eternal life. And it is that simple, but we make it complicated. Well, I'm too bad and God doesn't want me. No, 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 no. You are not too bad because there's nothing that you could have done that Jesus didn't die for. We're going to pray. And I saw a few folks that raised their hand for salvation. Before I pray, I don't want anybody looking around. Those two folks that raised their hand, would you just, if you're brave enough and bold enough, would you just look at me? I'm not going to call you out of your seat. I see you. I see you. If you truly want salvation and you want to ask Jesus Christ into your heart, please don't hesitate. We're getting ready to go saying, if you want to know and you want to ask him into your heart, I can take God's word and we can go off to a room over here. I can take both of you or I can separate you and get somebody else that can show you the plan. And we can show you in God's word how you can ask Jesus Christ into your heart. But I already explained it. This has to be your decision. There's seven people that asked Jesus into their heart and they are getting baptized today because they asked. It's going to be up to you to ask. And if you want it, and you're looking at me, you're like, hey, and you're, I feel like you want it because you're looking at me. My last question is, what's holding you back? What's holding you back? I remember I asked that question to a young man about a month ago. And I said, what's holding you back? And that young man looked at me. He said, nothing. And I said, then let's go. And he came. I'm going to pray. And we're going to stand and sing. But I'm going to say it one more time. What's holding you back? When we go into our song service and you want to know more, if you haven't asked Jesus into your heart and confessed it with your mouth and said, God, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Come up here and I will show you. I don't care if I have to leave the stage and we're in the middle of our song service. I want to show you in God's word how you can be saved. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And God, there are people here that are not sure. There are people here that are like, I don't know where I'm going to go. And God, I pray that they will not be fearful. I pray that you would keep Satan away. I pray that you would kill the flesh, Lord. Because the Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And God, these people want Jesus, but their flesh will keep them from it. Satan does not want them to come to Jesus and go to heaven. He wants them to go to hell. He wants to take everybody down with him. And Lord, keep Satan out of here. Keep Satan away out of their mind. And Lord, when we end this prayer, I pray that they will be brave and bold to come forward and ask Jesus into their hearts. And God, if they don't, that's their choice. And we're just going to keep on praying for them. But a seed was planted today. We love you. And we thank you. And I thank you for the forgiveness that you've given to me and everybody here. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand and go into our song service. If you want to know more, and I can show you in God's word, come on up here. I will show you. People that need to get baptized, Go, you can get changed so we can baptize you.
by uh, by the monies, my hands lifted high. Okay, just just play the song. We're going to sing that chorus one more time. But what I love is it says, so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. You know what that means? That means we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. In church, there are people that need prayer. When we battle, we do it on our knees. And you know what, uh, folks? I was up here for the two souls that looked at me. I was praying for you. And I want the flesh to die. I want, I want God to get a hold of your heart. And if you want Jesus in your heart... We still have time. There is still time. I will even take time after the service to walk through the Bible with you and to show you how you can get saved. But don't hesitate. I want to see people come to Jesus. I want to see people give their life to him and not be fearful about what people are thinking, what everyone's looking. Because you know what? Nobody cares that you step out. They care about your soul. So if you're here, ask them. Don't hesitate. We're going to sing the chorus again. And if you want Jesus in your heart, and you're like, I want to do this. I want to take that full plunge. Walk up here and I will go back and we were going to do this. We're going to we're going to go into the room and I'm going to show you in God's word how to do this. But don't wait. But it's your choice. Amen. Accept Jesus today and don't wait. Let's do that course one more time. So when we fight, I'll fight on my knees. Fight. I'll fight on my knees, so with my hands lifted high. Oh God, battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, battle belongs to you. Bye bye. 
I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted I Oh God belongs to you. We are the people of the cross. Jesus, we will be faithful till you meet us. Give us your courage as we finish. We want to hear well done. Jesus, we will be faithful till you meet us. Give us your courage as we 
we finish, we want to hear well done. Well done. We are the people of the cross. We are the people of the cross. Christ and Calvary is lost. We won't be shaken. We are the people of the cross. Amen. All right, at this time, we can go ahead and we can uh, start baptizing. You know what? I should have gotten people in order first. I thought I had to take my shoes off now. Great.